Alrighty guys, we had the first night of the draft on WWE Smackdown, then we had the rest of night one on the lowdown, if you watched that then, good luck to you, I've no idea where it was, I don't even think it happened, I think it was like off camera and then they just announced the draft picks, but anyway, we're here to decide who got the better of draft night one, was it Raw? Was it SmackDown? Or hell, maybe it was NXT because they got rid of some dead weight. But yeah, we are here to look at the picks from both SmackDown on air and then also on the lottery, draft lottery or whatever it is off air. Now, I did see a short WWE clip on YouTube for like two minutes and they announced the picks that were made after SmackDown and they actually acknowledged that Raw is an hour longer, and that is why Raw got more picks when the show went off there. But again, that makes no sense to me. Why didn't they acknowledge that on TV like they did in 2016 when they gave Raw an extra draft pick for each round? That made a lot more sense. So you're telling me that Raw is an extra hour, but all you're going to do is give Raw more picks when it gets to the bums. So SmackDown and Raw get like an equal amount of stars, but then the, the third hour on Raw is just going to be filled up with jobbers because they get the, the remainders, you know, the people that are left, the crumbs of the draft. I mean, seriously? I thought that was stupid, man. I, I don't understand that whatsoever. But anyway, we're here. We're going to use Wikipedia because... Why not? I think I once donated £2 to Wikipedia, so I'm going to get my £2 worth. We're using Wikipedia Plus. I don't know. I've got a feeling Wikipedia is probably more accurate than WWE.com. Anyway, who knows? Maybe WWE let Rob Van Dam write their articles, and based on what he was smoking the other night, I wouldn't let him write shit. But we are here to look at the round, so I'm going to look at each round. We're going to look at who got drafted to which brand. We're going to factor in, was it a draft from a different brand or whether they were simply drafting someone that was already on that show and uh, then we'll come to conclusion who got the better of each round and then we'll come to conclusion who got the better overall so for example if smackdown drafts someone from smackdown i don't see that as being a good a draft pick as if they drafted you know that same person from raw for me it's better it's a better draft if you're drafting someone from the different show because you're actually gaining something rather than just holding on to something but anyway let's look at round one so round one the bloodline they were on smackdown they stay on smackdown raw got cody rhodes but he was already on raw uh smackdown got bianca Belair from raw and raw kept becky ledge from uh, raw so yeah there you go for me it's quite obvious who got the better of this draft pick now i'm not even going to really factor in the fact that raw got the women's champ uh, smackdown got the raw women's champion because they'll probably switch the belt so that both shows have one female belt on it so to me that isn't even a big factor but the most notable thing is from here that basically cody rhodes bloodline and bianca belair no, not Bianca, Becky Lynch, sorry. They all stayed on the same brands, whereas Bianca Belair actually moved brands. So SmackDown felt like they actually gained something here. Plus, with SmackDown, they didn't just get Roman Reigns. They got Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman. So I think it's pretty fair to say that SmackDown won the first round. I like Cody Rhodes, and, and you know what? Becky Lynch is okay, I guess, for all, in the women's division. But I think it's fair to say that SmackDown won. They took somebody from Raw... And they held on to the bloodline. So for me, that is a win for SmackDown. And you would be hard to, you know, convince me otherwise. So round one, I'm getting round one to SmackDown. What the fuck? We've moved on to DX here. What the hell? Wikipedia's failing me. I want my two pounds back. Right, let's move on to uh, round two. So we can see round two started off with SmackDown getting the Street Profits. Then Raw got imperium so after this pick after the the third picks i was thinking well you know what i would give the edge to raw not only have they got the intercontinental champion but they've got three for the price of two plus at the moment gunther's been booked pretty strong so therefore i'd say he's better than montez ford and dawkins but then we move into the next picks smackdown get edge a hall of famer from raw and what did raw get raw simply get to keep matt riddle who in my opinion Hasn't came back from injury with much momentum. I know he's been feuding with the bloodline, but for me, 
Uh, it's it's just lame. I don't think anybody really cares about Matt Riddle right now. I've got a feeling Matt Riddle will never really be a world champion. I think he's just always going to be stuck in that upper mid-card position. I think any time he's put in a main offence spot, it will just be to lose. So for me, again, round two, simply for the fact that SmackDown took Edge away from Raw. And again, you look at it, SmackDown got two uh, picks from Raw. Whereas Raw got one pick from SmackDown and the other pick was simply Raw holding on to Matt Riddle. So for me, again, with round two, I've got to give the edge to um to SmackDown. They got edge for God's sake. If that's not enough to give them the victory here, then honestly, what is? It has to go to SmackDown, and I am giving this one to SmackDown. Moving into round three. So SmackDown kick off by taking Bobby Lashley. And, and straight away, I honestly don't see how SmackDown can lose this round now. Drew McIntyre goes from SmackDown to Raw. I mean, but at this stage, I think over the past... And I know Drew had that world title main event against Roman Reigns, but since then, Drew's dropped off big time. I just think there's more money in Bobby Lashley. I prefer watching Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley, for me, is much more interesting at the moment. And I would actually say Bobby Lashley's more over at the moment. So for me... On pick number five, I think Lashley is better for SmackDown than Drew is for Raw. And then look at the next picks. SmackDown get the OC. And I get it, right? You might not think much of um, the Good Brothers and, and Meechin. But it's still three people that they're getting. Plus, they're getting the phenomenal AJ Styles. If AJ Styles can get back to somewhat near his best, then this is a pretty good pick. Then look what Raw get. Raw simply get to hold on to the fucking Miz. The Miz is probably the one guy that needed to move brand in this draft. You know, he has been beyond stale on Raw. The Miz has probably been stale now for a good five, six years. And I think he needed to move, but he didn't move. So for me, again, SmackDown win round three. I don't see how you can't give it to SmackDown. Bobby Lashley is better than Drew, and the OC is better than the Miz. So yeah, for me... That's three rounds in a row now that SmackDown's won. And I don't know if we'll hear any news about USA being annoyed because I know USA Network apparently wanted Roman Reigns. That was what they were pushing for in the draft. Not only did they not get Roman Reigns, but in my opinion, they've been pretty shafted in this draft. Moving on to the fourth round. And I think this round I would have to give to Raw. Raw lose damage control, but then again, that's a pretty good thing for Raw. So again, yeah, it's not even like that's a bad thing. Raw's actually gained by losing damage control to SmackDown. Then Raw got Nakamura, and then both brands got a pick from NXT. SmackDown took the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, and Raw took the Women's NXT Champion Indy Hartwell. So yeah, I would give this round four to Raw. I mean... Not by much, but I believe Nakamura is definitely the best pick in this round. So, you know, I, I'll give this one to Raw. Raw finally win round four. But for me, they definitely lost round one, two, and three. So based on there, it's 3-1 to, three, one to uh, SmackDown for me. And then we move on to the free agent. So this is everybody that was picked after uh, SmackDown went off there. Apollo Crews moved from NXT to Raw. Candice LeRae was on Raw. She stays on Raw. Uh, Raw picked up Sonya Deville for SmackDown, but they also got to keep Chelsea Green. Again, I, I just don't understand why all these people are being picked as tag teams. Raw kept, kept Dexter Loomis, who I think probably needed to move. SmackDown kept Hit Row. Raw got JD McDonnan. SmackDown kept Lacey Evans. Raw kept the maximum male models, even though... I was sure they were on SmackDown. I thought they were on SmackDown. Apparently, they were on Raw to begin with, but for me, they were always on SmackDown. Then Raw gained Natalia. I mean, is that anything to be excited about? They also gained the Viking Raiders, who are fucking jobbers at this stage, and then they gained Zoe Stark, who, in my opinion, is as is, is bland as you can get. Honestly, she's not even attractive to look at. There's nothing. She's got no, not in a horrible way, but I just don't see any like redeemable factors with Zoe Stark. I don't. I just don't. She's she's solid in ring, but a lot of people are solid in ring. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter. So yeah, Zoe Stark. Then again, I guess the women's division does suck. I think Zoe Stark will be someone that can work with wrestlers and help them put on half decent matches. But I don't see Zoe Stark ever being the top dog. I don't see her ever holding the Women's Championship on Raw. 
or SmackDown. I don't even think she's good enough to hold it on NXT. Never mind on the main roster. But anyway, guys, that was the night one draft picks. And yeah, Raw did get the better, I guess, of the draft that happened off here. I would definitely give this to Raw. I mean, SmackDown only got two picks. It was Hit Row and Lacey Evans. And while I don't mind Lacey Evans, she hasn't exactly done much since coming back to the company. And, you know, Hit Row are awful. So, yeah, I would definitely give Raw the, the nod on this one, even though it was mostly jobbers they got. I think getting Apollo Crews could be a big deal, especially if he keeps up the performances and the gimmick that he's had on NXT. So, yeah, for me, Raw did round, round uh, Raw won round four, and they won this, like, post-draft. But overall, I've got to give the win to SmackDown. I think they won round one, two, and three, and for me, yeah, they, they did come out the better of both shows. So who knows, maybe Raw will make up... Maybe that's what their plan was. Maybe on SmackDown, they wanted SmackDown to get the better picks. But then on Raw, Raw will get the better picks. I have to assume that's how it's going to go. Because I think if Raw goes similar to the way SmackDown went with the draft picks, then SmackDown is easily going to be the better show. Plus, it's going to be an hour or less. So, yeah, Raw could be in trouble. I think Raw has to have a big night on night two of the draft or else the rosters are just lopsided. So, who knows? But then again, people will probably be showing up on different shows after, like, two weeks. So, none of this shit really matters, guys. But, yeah, I'm giving the, I'm giving the win to SmackDown. Team SmackDown got the better of the draft. Let me know what you think down below. Who do you think won the draft, Raw or SmackDown? Let us know in the comments. I'll catch you next time. Peace.